you can go to sleep at night and be like, I did that. I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. It, and then it's coming from a spirit where it's like, it wasn't forced, or I had to go take from somebody, or I had to go risk. You know what I'm saying? Risk what the fuck I got going on, jeopardize what I got going on just to make this stuff happen. So I just feel like that alone, just looking at my daughter, she probably not understand everything right now, but it's just the simple fact on her face, like, Pa's able to take care of you and me. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. What's popping? You already know we got special guests in the building. Yo, uh, what's going on? Tight is here. What's I good? What's right? good? Yes, sir. First and foremost, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, it's so much to uh, to talk with about you. And it's crazy because you still want to rise. Like, you still up and coming artist. But it's so much to talk about. Most definitely. Um, first and foremost, for my audience that might not know you, I know your peoples know. You're super humble. Most, I try to be. You're <laughs> like, this shit is almost too humble. For real. I fuck with it. I love it. I'm like, this guy got it. Like, like, bro, like, you're super humble. I fuck with that. That's real. That's real. Um, I, I don't even know where I want to start. I, I, Tallahassee, tell me, because I really don't know too much about Tallahassee. I do want to have just a regular conversation. You can pour up if you want. Yeah, we got the um, Bel Air Bumble. I said Bel Air Bumble is yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's a sovereign brand, so that's why I say Bel Air. Sovereign brands own Bumble. Uh, you might see it with Lil Wayne and all that shit. Rick Ross promoting that shit, but most shout definitely, out. most definitely. Shout out to the guys, man. But yeah, tell me about, tell me a little bit about uh, Tallahassee. I don't, I never been. Tallahassee, small city, big hustle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, coming to the city, we got two of the biggest uh, colleges. You know what I'm saying? Uh, FAMU, shout out to the Rattlers and uh, FSU, Florida State Seminoles. Mm. You know, and uh, most people coming to the city, they feel like it's a, a college town. You mm. know, part of town, which it is. You know, it's a, it's, it's a lot of motion through there, but at the same time. We got the trenches as well, like every other city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I just feel like in Tallahassee, it's a lot harder to make it out than almost any other city in Florida, major city. Like when people think of uh, you know Orlando, Miami, and Tampa, and so forth. Like back then, more so coming in, artists got to pass through Tallahassee first. You got to mm -hmm. sell out that moon. You know what I'm saying? That was like the main club, and then it trickled from there. So. Like I say, just Tallahassee is a small city, big hustle. People trying to make it out. You know, it's 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 one of those cities where you can get lost mm. super fast. You know, and what it's, it's the capital too, right? The capital of Florida. Damn, Sheesh. most down. It's it's funny because you know I think you probably used to hearing this when I hear Tallahassee, I'll just think of fucking T Pain. That's where you from? Yep, Tallahassee, yeah, I, Florida. I just always heard him say it, Tallahassee. So yeah. like, damn, bro, like. You know, the first thing that stood out to me, and this might not be um, what everybody think about, and I don't even know if you had this conversation before, but the first thing that stood out to me is the struggles that our people, African American, um, share, Most definitely. but we so judgmental of each other. And what I mean by that is you have a, you, you grew up in a two parent household. Yeah. And, um, but you still, bro, <laughs> you still went through some shit. Some shit, for and, real. But even, in, even without the, the struggle. Let's talk about a two parent household. I was listening to you and I was thinking like, bro, imagine the ups and downs, right? You, you spoke about how like your mom's probably would lose her job one time and then your pops, it probably would go back and forth. Yeah. But just that change and that influx in the family household is so triggering and just frustrating in itself. Talk to me about just seeing your parents 
have that battle, the, the, the battle of the struggle or the, the, the battle of the ups and downs that you might see your moms get it and you, your, your father might get frustrated when he don't have it or your father Most got definitely. it and, and it, the tension that it brings in the house. Talk I to mean, me about that like, a little bit. Growing up, like I said, in a two in a two home household, a lot of people thought we had it. Especially when you look at me, I was the only child on both ends. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And not knowingly, like whatever that the household of three or four going through, we going through the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, coming from the circumstances that I'm coming from, and that my parents came from, my mom, my pops from a a a, a group of eleven, mm -hmm. my mom from a group of six. You know what I'm saying? And they all, both of them stepped out at a young age, like off on their own. My Smurf ain't, my pops ain't finished school. Um, my mama ain't finished school, you know, and, and where they at now, it's, even with in job elevation over the years, it's like where they, post, where they at right now, they weren't supposed to be there. Mm. Like these people went to school for this stuff, went to have degrees for the stuff by, by the grace of God that they did, but just growing up, it just was like, Damn, if Smurf ain't got it, my pop, that's why I call him Smurf, or my mama ain't got it, that was it. Mm -hmm. We ain't have, my grandma ain't really, my grandma ain't had nothing. My other grandma ain't had nothing. Like, it was in that household, that was it. Talk to me about, man, did you, I don't know if you know, but did your parents, were your grandparents married? Say that again. Was it, were, were your grandparents married? Oh, no. Nah. But on both ends. Well, my mom's side, they was married, but on my, my, my pop's side, they were separated. How did they stick together for so long? Cause like you spoke about how like they stuck like they they stuck together and they made sure you were straight Most and definitely. they might have had their fuse in the house, but like they made sure one common denominator and that was you. They made sure you was good. They made sure they stuck together in the house to be a family. Most definitely, and I feel like exactly what you just said. That was the common denominator. Nineteen ninety one, ninety one. But All I right. feel like that was the common denominator. It was more so like. Once you feel, I feel like once you feel that, once you find that right person, and y'all work through the flaws, like my pops and my moms done been together over 20 some years, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I done seen the toughest of times, like, damn, you fuck you, F, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But once, I feel like once you find that right person where they understand you, and you understand them, and you get them where it's like, shit, we done been. We done been through the mud, you know what I'm saying? We do go back there, we know how to get out of it. Mm. And that's the thing that I, I took, I think I took from them the most. It's like, they weren't scared to go broke. They weren't scared to go, oh, we failed, we fell off. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that in that sense, cause it's like, we know how to get out of it. Mm. We know how to make sense of it. And I think that's what I took from it to say, I know not what to do. You know what I'm saying? I learned from it from an aspect like, I know not to do that. I know not to go in this atmosphere and do this right here and do this right here, flash out and do this right here. Like, I feel like at the same time, uh, when you walk into these corporate situations and you having meetings and talkings with these people, you got to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like the generation that came before us, my parents and so forth, they didn't capitalize on that. It was more so work, come back to the crib. I want to know, just from your perspective, how did they stay together? Like, what, what was, if, if, cause I'm assuming that you had to take something from this. Like when you, Almost when you're, definitely. a lot of times we take the negative and, and we take whatever we, we see in our, in our childhood, right? So when you in a relationship or you, when you, and I don't know your situation, but like when you got a girl and you looking to marry and things like that, what are some things that you took away from it to help you stay with your partner? Cause a lot, like I said, a lot of us African Americans, we don't know how to be loved. And, and we definitely. see all these videos and these memes and how I want to love or how I want somebody to love me, but we don't even know how to love somebody. Most definitely. What did you take away from your parents being together so long and, and really sticking it out? How, like, how, how would you do it? Working through the biggest thing I've seen, working through the bullshit. And what I mean by that, working through the BS, you got to get to a point. Like my my parents got together at an early age, mm. like teenager years. So they went through the phase of uh, you got to listen to your girlfriends, you got to listen to your partners. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Man, she, uh, he, he ain't. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that stage alone, cause that's an influential stage. I mm -hmm. feel like you know what I'm saying. You listen, you rely on your friends your close friends even sure. when we get older but at a i feel like in teenage years going into your 20s that's where it count the most you know what I'm saying? Were we the most vulnerable and i feel like at that time my pops was like 23 going on 24 when he had me and my mama just had turned 20 
or tw- going on 21 when she had me. That's a young, bro. That's Super a young. lot of tension, pain. You feel me? Sheesh. And like the thing, like I, I can't even remember stuff from that. You know right. what I'm saying? That that age, but what I take from it of looking back on it in my own situation, I'd be like, y'all had to go do some BS. You know what I'm saying? Where it was he say, she say. Mm. And I feel like in this generation, that's what destroys the household. Mm. He say, she say shit. Like, it's a lot of stuff. It be some truth in it. But at the same time, the truth don't be 100%. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like sometimes, even with friends and close family members and stuff like that, they fluctuate the truth. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be more so the type of person, I know my man or I know who I'm, I'm dealing with. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Who I'm in bed with. And I feel like at the time, the, the, the state of time that we in is like, trust is like one of the biggest factors. And I feel like that's what got my parents through. They mm. trusted one another. Don't try me, I won't try you. And it was simple as that. You know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do. I do what I got to do. We make it happen at the end of the day. And it was simple as that. Facts. You know what I think one of the biggest like struggles is with relationships, man? It's power struggle. Like this 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 struggle of just not being able to release relinquish power. You know, a lot of men think they wanna I wanna be in charge. I wanna be the head <laughs> of the household. And that's okay, you can be, but also understanding to sometimes sometimes men gotta relinquish the power to that woman. Sometimes men gotta submit to that woman. Most definitely. Vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like women gotta submit to men. And I don't think it's like we always and I'm getting tired of these podcasts because we always hear the this nigga ain't this or this chick ain't mm-hmm. and I be like, bro. It's just a bunch of hurt. I feel like both of us got to work together. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I ask you that because we hear so many people talking about. We was brainwashed into it. Yeah. It's like like, almost quote unquote. They, it's the media, like even before the social media, but when you look at the news, that's the pictures they painted in our culture. Dad not around, Mm -hmm. but in, in real reality, like a lot of like hood, I grew up in the hood. You feel what I'm saying? But. It wasn't like how the TV portrayed it. Like, everybody ain't have no daddy. Like, it, most of my part, they, they daddy was there. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But for the most part, when you look at it and you look back on it, it's like, when you look at the media, it's like, nobody daddy was around. Mm. But so really, like they brainwashed it, the whole it, time. It was brainwashed. Niggas, was, daddies was around. Niggas, daddy. I ain't saying for everybody. No, of course. You know what I'm saying? For the, for the most part. But, a lot of their they they parents there. might not been together, but they was relevant in their life. They made sure they had this and that and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my my pops wasn't around, but I see what you're trying. I see what you're saying for sure. It's kind of like the news. All they show is negative shit. So my that's dude, all you think of. You think point. of the hood. You think of dirt and tra- whole time is a Most lot of definitely. jewels. You know what? Another thing that I thought about, think about your story. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how like we can live in the same neighborhood? Let's talk about the hood, right? Mm-hmm. But people in that neighborhood down each other as if like we ain't in the same position we ain't in the same position i remember i, I grew up in the projects and i used to because you was like you was the only one and um you was the only child i was the only child and, oh that's real yeah that's so like that real. You used to get teased a lot or whatever like yeah. that right same but i'm thinking like the audacity like how can i get teased when you live right across the, across the, the court street, from me right? <laughs> like, uh, not even right same... across you up under me and uh, or on top of me facts. you know what I'm and, your, and your situation you, you was in the trailer park Most and dumb. it's like wait bro how can you are you might got some jordans but you still in the same trailer like most definitely <laughs> most definitely, <laughs> you, most you definitely. i never understood that but now i'm a grown i'm grown i'm like ain't that's crazy how like we really tear each other apart bro Tears I, down. that shit is crazy bro talk to me about growing up in a trailer park because yo me coming from the projects right let me just let's just give you a little short story about me came in the project so when i go to hypothetically la I see these houses and they say this is the hood. And my first thing that comes to my mind is this is a house. A house. <laughs> <laughs> this is a house. So I'm curious now, right? Because now I got somebody that grew up in a trailer park. That room. And I'm like, oh nigga, you was so judgy You're talking about this is a house, but it's still the projects. I grew up in an apartment. Most down. It's still a step up from a trailer. Most down. Talk to me about that shit. Like, did you ever look at niggas like, bro, you at least you had you, you was in an apartment you had upstairs downstairs nigga i was in the trailer man we ain't get our first house until like a nice you know little nice little size until i was in high school for a house you know what i'm saying and uh trailer park 
living out there, it was more so a community. Mm. Like, I don't even think it was, like, at the age when we were staying out there, I was super young. I was maybe, like, six years old, mm. like, six, seven years old. And at that time, it was more so all my peers around the same age. So I don't even think it was more so to that hate, you know, or that envy. You probably didn't even know no better. Yeah, you I mean, feel you what i it was more so like shit. We on bicycles. We okay. pick a legs to the yeah. you know to the candelator and shit like that. But I did have those type of thoughts in my head because you you overhear your you know what I'm saying your partner like man, I wish we was saying stuff that you were saying. They were saying about somebody else that was at school that mm. had that. Okay, so it went towards me. It was more so to peers of ours that had it better than us, you mm. know what I'm saying? But it wasn't never from an envy state of mind or a hatred state of mind. It was just like, why the hell they complaining? Mm. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Like, no, what, what? let what me fuck? know something I don't know about. Like, because right. it, 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 it can't get worse than this. No cap. No you know cap. what I'm saying? It can't get worse than this. It's crazy because, like, I'm thinking about it, like, I'm thinking about the complaints that I had, right? And I'm just like, bro, you crazy. Like, this man grew up in a trailer. Like, even if we got people that's doing worse than us, like it's just, it's just, it's Always. Just, it put things in perspective. Like when I seen you, you did like a little documentary and you went back home and I'm like, bro, this, like it's people out there that's really struggling. We got to appreciate what we have and Most shit, bro. Definitely. I said this earlier, you super humble. Where do you, I'm going to follow up this question with something, but where do you see your career right now? Like, where do you see yourself? I feel like I'm in that phase where um, they can study me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm in that phase where I'm a new artist, upcoming artist, most definitely, but I feel like you could take something from me. Mm. And not well, when I see it, I'm judgmental. It's more so like, I get where you coming from. For sure. I took from somebody. For sure. And, that, and I feel like the greatest minds is always taken from something and it's evolved. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like people get that, that small statement took in the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he took from, or, He's saying, uh, he trying to, you know what I'm saying, shit like that, but man, we just, that's the formula that was written for, that's, that, that's the formula that working for us right now, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm in that stage in, in my career where a motherfucker come to my page or come around me and they could be able to lead with something. I don't give a fuck if I said the smallest thing to them, like, keep going. You coming from a nigga that came from nothing. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? So when I heard that shit on the other side of the tracks from a nigga that I know that came from nothing, they tell me keep going. I'm like, I can feel it. I know you mean it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm just at that stage where people paying attention be like, man, this is what I need to do. Or not even so, because I make mistakes. I ain't perfect from a long shot. That's what I don't need to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it go both ways, but I feel like that's where I'm at in my career. Do you ever have times where, I feel like you, you, you do, but depending on, I'm gonna just ask, do you ever have times where you like frustrated because you, you, it's like you almost at the next level, but not there yet? I'm battling that right now, though. I can imagine. Like it's, it's, your mind is, I feel like your biggest enemy. You know what I'm saying? And we all get to a point, I feel like this is everybody, the biggest billionaires or what, however much money a motherfucker got, like, I feel like we all get to a point where we like, damn, I done reached the cap. Like, it's, it's no nothing past this. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I jump into the next category? Mm, mm, mm. And I feel like a lot of us don't take the, the time to sit down and be like, man, you need help. Mm. Like, I feel like some, a lot of people are self-conscious. You know, like, I know what's best for me. But sometimes you got to kind of break that mentality and be like, People want to see you do good, man. They can see something that you don't see. Or they can see a flaw that you don't see that could catapult you to the next level. So I just feel like sometimes we be our biggest, uh, we be our biggest, biggest downfall. Critic. Yeah, our biggest downfall. For sure. Most definitely. I was talking to an artist and I was asking him, would he get, try to get a feature with somebody because he had some connection? He was like, no, nah, I wasn't asking me. He got to, I want to basically work so hard that he recognized me and asked me for a feature. I for understand real. that. For real. However, I feel like sometimes us not wanting to ask for a quote unquote handout is a defense mechanism of no, because yeah. no hurts. You know what I'm saying? When somebody rejection hurts. So That's what true. happens is like when you ask for something and they reject you, we, we hurt by it, we angry from it. So to avoid that pain, we don't ask at all. We want to get definitely. it ourselves. 
when in all actuality, we all need help along the way. Most definitely. And there's nothing wrong with help. You know what I'm saying? I, I told somebody, I said, I think my biggest attribute for me is that I'm not afraid to ask somebody for help. That's how I always been. Because <laughs> you got to yes speak up. Going, 100%. You got to speak up. Facts. Do you ever think about, because this, this is where I was going with it. I was looking at you and I was like, man, this dude is so dope. I really want him to make it. But it seems like the good guys always finish last. Most definitely. Do you ever feel like that about yourself or be like? Man, my mama always had this quote. <laughs> she say, uh, the last will finish first. And it's, it's, it's kind of like a quote out of the Bible as well. But um, I always feel like that. I feel like mm. I always got to work 30 times harder than this person that just came in the door and he just raised his hand and they mm. just picked him from the crowd. But the thing that I learned from it, the motherfucker that never go through nothing, the motherfucker that don't last. They, they don't never know last. nothing. They never last. They don't know how to go through the ups and downs. They don't know uh, when shit get bad, how you shake it off. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. They don't. They, they just don't know the other side or whatever how they came in. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like in my shoes back then, I used to look at it like, man, what the be frustrated, mad at it, but now I look at it as a blessing. Cause it the is. doors opening up, and mm -hmm. it's like, man, I know how to shake when stuff get bad. I know how to turn myself back up when the labor say, we closing the door on you, oh, he done. I know how to turn it back up. I know how to go get a deal and make it make sense. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I feel like at the end of the day, like when you in your darkest hours, sometimes them be your biggest blessings. Facts. Like you was in some dark times. You said you was living in a motherfucking uh, storage unit at one you point. You home. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> you my question is, I ain't understand that though. You gotta explain that to me because your parents always had your back. Most definitely. And after you wasn't living there, you went back home. So why didn't you just go home from the jump? It was more so of a thing of, um, I think I heard Money Man say this because I always question myself like, man, what, what pushed you to do that? Or get in that situation. It was like a burden feeling. Mm. We ain't never had shit, bro. Like, I got both parents, but we going through shit that a single parent going through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm the type of person, motherfucker never had to tell me, go do this, go do that. I do it and I bring it to the table and be like, this is what I done done. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when I got in that, I was fresh out of high school. I had just got signed. Went broke, deal went sour, super sour. You feel what I'm saying? And at that time, it was more so we had no move. I had no move out the city. I was I, I was gone from Tallahassee. It was more so like a homesick thing. It was more so I ain't know who the fuck I was. It was more so identity thing. It was more so man. It was it was so many emotions balled up in one. It was just I. It felt like I ran away. Mm. Damn y'all. And at the time, my pops was in a whole different state trying to go get some money. He was in South Carolina at the time. My dudes, we was in the O, you feel what I'm saying? So at that time, that was a new experience. You feel what I'm being away so long, did woo, woo, this happening, this happening. And now, like I said, I was in the streets as well, you feel what I'm saying? So coming out there and on top of that, just having a daughter. Mm -hmm. So it was like so many emotions and so much stuff. It was just like, damn, all this shit. Like, Do you think that was kind of back what we're talking about? Do you think that was almost like ego getting in the way like man i most can't definitely. go back home most definitely like mm -hmm. i think that played the biggest like the biggest factor of this shit. like you know you come from that you was blessed with an opportunity it might not have been the biggest opportunity but you're blessed with an opportunity but i was at a young age i didn't know what to do with the opportunity mm -hmm. so it felt like on my end it felt like i'm much like but this how we got but I fucked up the bag. I fucked up the play. You know what I'm saying? And it caused me to just go into a state of mind where it was like, go get it on your own again. Mm. Shut everybody out. Like, that's how I was feeling at the time. Like, I damn all this shit. Like, it was more so like a, 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 a I ain't gonna say no fuck you thing, but it was more so like a, I'm finna, I'm finna try to just figure out who I am. What I want to do. I knew it was the music, but at the same time, it was more so coming from a point of mind where it was like, how are you going to do it? 
How you gonna you got A, but how you gonna get the Z? Mm. Mama, mama only gonna go so far. Pops gonna only go so far. They ain't got thousand dollars to keep shelling out or two shell out. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel like it was at a point of state of mind. It was like just stepping out on your own, leaving the nest type shit. Damn. So what it sounds like, I'm not sure, but it's was you signed before this time you started living in the uh, U-Haul? I Please. just had, I I had probably about, I was six months in into signing. Who you were signed with? Um, my mixtape slash Warner Brothers at the time. Okay. So you had a deal. Had a deal. The deal fucked up. Mm, went sour. You thought you fumbled the bag. You probably dealing with embarrassment, depression, hurt. I'm gonna do this my, myself. I'm gonna get it on my own. I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb back to the top. How did the deal go sour? It was more so at that point of time. I ain't had the following that I have now. I ain't had the support that I have now. I ain't. I ain't even know nothing about the business, mm. the paperwork, the nothing. Like it was just more so. I got some money. I sign, I make music. That's, that was the objective, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, it was, it was deeper than that. I ain't had control of what I put out. I didn't, uh, I didn't know the, uh, the career, the direct that I was trying to go through. They weren't fucking with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then when the first record that I dropped that they quote unquote was projecting to go, it didn't go. It was a regional type shit and I got shelved. You know, I got shit fast, like super fast. Damn. So wait, you had a you had to have some type of success to even get signed. You had a big song. Bro, they weren't even a big song. Well, how, how did they sign you? How did they find Man, you? A quick story. Um, shout out to Coleon Entertainment, Cola P down there in Miami, or uh, Zeke. He reached out to me and uh one of his people in his underage name was Snoop at the time. And when they used to always come through Tallahassee, and I used to open up for them, always, back to back, back to back, back to back. And I just was one of the ones I networked with anybody. You feel what I'm saying? The play was a woo -woo -woo opportunity. I'm in there, you know? And I built a relationship, and um, I got in good with the boys, but I never sent them no record, never sent them no music, never even talked about the business, nothing like that. When y'all in town, fuck with me. Woo -woo -woo, I pull up, shit like that. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point, I was working at Ross at the time. Ross. Raw stores, I, I worked the bat. And I quit it. I quit it and uh I went home and uh I said, man, I'm gonna take this music shit serious. And it was my record, Florida, actually. That was like my first big record. And I dropped the hook. And I was like, man, this shit hard oh, smurfed mm. my which is my pops. He the one that pushed me to, he gave me the concept, like, man, talk about that Florida shit. Just talk about Florida. And I was like, all right, cool. And I dropped it. And it was just the hook. And I just sent it to him. Like, no, what's up? What, I just sent it to him. And he called me. He said, boy, this it. Mm. Boy, this, this the motherfucking one. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Woo, the woo, shit like that. And actually, that was the damn one. And he told Zeke. Zeke had a connection with my mixtape. My mixtapes were looking for an artist because they did a partnership with one of the brothers. Now, the first artist they signed. Off of that record, I ain't had no buzz. I ain't have no prior shitty with off the strength of that unreleased song. That's hard. For sure. It's crazy how like we think of some shit like when we young. Because you ain't fuck up the bag. That was just something that you you got that off of a connection or whatever and most that, I ain't I ain't know no better. Right, because you yeah, definitely ain't fucked that bag. First up. thing definitely like, ain't fucked some that money, bag. Now I'm 18 going on that bag. What was the other, uh, cause you were signed to a couple labels, right? You got yeah, dropped from I went from them, I got dropped. I got dropped from them. And then a year later, I signed with Atlantic Records. Okay. And then you, you, you not, you still with them? No, I ain't with Atlantic. What happened with that? Atlantic, I don't really think it was nothing that really happened. It was just more so, it was time to go. Like I dropped my hit record, um, it was called the hit song. You know what I'm saying? I dropped that last year. And it came out like prior to that, the ruckus that came out. What was the name dropped. of that so people know? Which one? The hit song, yeah. It was called Hit. Oh, Hit. The Hit. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm hit. thinking. That was it. Okay, my bad. My but bad. the prior ruckus tour, we dropped probably like seven to eight ruckus. And uh, they got traction, but it ain't really catch. You know what I'm saying? But when we got finally got to the hit song, 
And like, that's when TikTok was really booming. You know, where it's booming, really yeah, booming right now. now. But yeah. that's when it was like really a new platform, shit like that. And I dropped it on the platform and it went crazy. Like just went stupid. The label ain't want to support it. Mm. And they 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 just like it got to a point my A and R's and the people I was in co-host with, they was like, man. We just gone. I was like, man, just put the record. I, that's all I need to put the record. I had a little cheese, woo woo, and I pushed the song myself. And man, that record, that that's the record that changed my life, dog. Damn, like you it signed changed with, um, my life. Somebody really popular now. Uh, slip and slide. Slip and slide. Yeah, slip and, that's that's a that's like a Florida home team record label, independent record. How the hell, label. like? Did you, how did that, <laughs> like, you been blessed yeah. the whole, whole time, nigga, like. So once we got out the situation, it, we was in cahoots with Atlantic, you know, trying to get out the situation and woo the woof, probably about six months, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the I got a production deal with Island Prolific, uh, shout out to Chris Jones. And um, it's so crazy, like, I, I, I say this all the time, cause it's so crazy, two years prior to me being with Slip Slide Nine, I met Ted Lucas. He was at Atlantic. And I'm a big Plies fan. Like, that's my favorite all time artist. You feel me? I that's grew up. crazy. I grew up on that nigga. You it's, know what I'm saying? But before you finish, right now, to cut you off, it's crazy because I, <laughs> I got a line brother that's from Florida. And his favorite artist is <laughs> Plies. And I swear to God, when he first told me that, I'm like, man, Plies, <laughs> the fuck? But Plies is really like that. Man, <laughs> like, he just spoke that. It was so soulful when he came. Okay, everything he spoke about, it was going on in the hood. That's crazy. You feel me? It was going on in the hood. But to make a long story short, it was just basically it was um like I say um Chris Jones. I met Ted two years ago at when I was on the Atlantic. Okay. And Chris knew I was a big Plies fan, and that's who you know found Plies. And it was studio, he's like, man, this this uh Ted Luke. I'm like, oh shit, this, this slip and slide. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what good OG, you know what I'm saying? And I was working on a record in the studio and I played it for him. And he was like, but it was like, yeah. You know, like, like I, cool. you know what I'm saying? Woo the woo. But long story short, it's like when I dropped the hit record, it was full circle. The, is the hit, just curious, is the hit record when you was on a boat? With the purple? No, no, no. Hit rock when I was in that? the hood. I had a. Uh, they said I, I just did a million views on YouTube. That's major. Major. That's the last record I just that's dropped. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's major. That's major going crazy. That's you know, crazy. Major going. Now, Hit was two singles before that one. Okay. Yeah, the two singles before that. That major right going crazy. And, he, and it caught his attention. His AR, shout out to um, Bang. He's, he called it, he took it to him, and then. When he started doing, I get, you know, Isaac, they do mm -hmm. their research, whoop, whoop. He find out, he like, man, this my partner artist. You know what I'm saying? Man, let's go ahead and set it up, whoop. I'm fresh off Atlantic. I'm back independent, whoop, whoop, you know, stuff like that. He set the situation up. I um, went down to Miami, man. I told him straight up, like, I remember this day, the biggest thing I said, I said, I can't ride the bench no more. Mm. I said, I don't been on the bench too long, bro. Like, I've like, I been doing this music 10 plus years. Even though that I'm just getting in the limelight where it's regional now, but I know what I can bring to the table. Mm. What you said earlier, I knew my worth when I got to that point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I done worked in the business uh, long enough from a, a, a beginner point of view where I knew what I was looking for. I knew what I was missing. You feel what I'm saying? And when I came to him I, and I showed him the whole formula, it was more so like, this is what I'm missing. Mm. It was opportunists meet the meet the plug. You feel what I'm saying? And it's like it went hand in hand. And it's like, man, I've been over there. With, I dropped my first record over there in March, and it's been through the roof since. So you that main artist that they pushing? I, I wouldn't even say that because we got Mike Smith over there. That my boy. We got Baby J over there. We got Tenny over there. But I just feel like. They pushing all the artists, like simultaneously. Everybody again, yeah, everybody again, everybody got their own lane. That's how I just feel it, but I just feel like I'm bringing that spice to it, though. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, and this ain't even in no cocky way, like, I just feel like I was brought on to this label to bring what I was taught. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, bro, if I see you lacking in this, do this. 
And I expect the same thing from my peers. It's Mike Smith, Tenille, Baby J, because I don't know every fucking thing. You know, it's some shit that I don't, you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo. So, like, at the end of the day, I just feel like everybody, when I came into this, in, the, in this family, everybody was in cahoots. Like, it was like, man, we can really make this work. We do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like everybody just, who the closest to the rim right now? Mm. Who the closest to the rim? Like, and, and I feel like once the egos out the way and all that shit done, bro, it's whoever the closest to the rim, I'm throwing the ball right back up to the court. Who next? You feel what I'm saying? And that's how, and I feel like it's a repetitive process, and that's how you keep it going, bro. From especially from an independent label. I feel like your music, bro, and just you as a person is like total, total opposite. I feel like your music is definitely giving cocky. Like I'm that nigga. <laughs> But yo, like just talking to you, like even just doing my research, it was, it was something enjoyable. It wasn't something that was boring. I wasn't like, oh man, yeah, I real. Got, it was. I'm like, damn, this nigga got a story. That's real. Question: What happened to um? I see you came with a camera, man. Do you still talk to the guy that shot the first video? For yeah. You? yeah, yeah, yeah. Number still talk boy, to him? Charlie Sky. I was listening. I was looking at him, and he was just talking about how uh, he shot it on the Canon T3 or some shit <laughs> yeah. like that. I'm like, nah, this is fire. I fu I love shit like that, bro. Like, Most definitely. Where, That's my boy. Where, where are you at now? Like how how are you feeling now? I know you you said everybody had that 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 car, that, that struggle of like just trying to get to the next level. Most like definitely. where you at mentally, man? I know there's a lot of things going well. Um but yeah, it's like where you at? How you I'm, feeling? I'm just in that space where um, a lot of this stuff new. Mm. Like I'm 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 used to working at a fast pace. But now it's in the fast pace where it's in the business world. Mm. So it's like the stuff that I'm accustomed to. Man, man, go holla at what's called tell them to come through, we can pay them. Or you know what I'm saying? It don't work like that. Damn. You gotta really go into these offices and hey, how you doing? When it go back to what your mama and your pops taught you, or what your mama taught you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. first depression type, you going to clothes iron, you got a crease in your shirt. You know what I'm saying? It starts from those type of conversations and then it builds to man what you do it ain't always coming up what you do or knowing what a person do but every time you see that he's like damn he always involved in something mm. he all he every time i get around he elevates so i'm just in that state of mind where what can i take from somebody else to elevate me and not only elevate me but whoever i'm down I'm in cahoots with or i'm conversing with how can i help y'all I mean, there ain't no one-way street, and I learned that the fast way. Cause, like I said, coming from the streets or coming from the environment that I'm coming from, it was always survival mode. Survival mode. Like we trying to just get, take, go. Like mm -hmm. shit, we we'll figure out the next player down the road. But now it's more so. I done slowed myself down. It's like I was thinking about just yesterday. Now I'm thinking about five years from now. Mm -hmm. My boy TJ right here. I talk to him all the time. Like, bro, I'm thinking about five, ten years from now. I got a daughter now. It ain't years what type finna do, but I gotta I make sure shit like set four, up for her. Five? She about to turn four. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta make sure shit set up for her because when I look back on what I just came from, my parents ain't know no better. They thought they was, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm trying to make sure my child doing the woo the woo and they had the best of the best, but at the time, what now when you look at it, be like, damn, I ain't really have a grip on things like I thought I did. Mm. Cause I coming out the trenches still. Like I don't want my daughter to go through this. I Let me want ask her you to this. have a head start. Let me ask you this. Always thinking ahead, trying to think down the line. When the last time you lived in a moment and just appreciate the things that's going on now and then just gave yourself a pat on the back for how far you came, honestly. Man, looking at my daughter because it's coming from a, it's coming from a, it came from a, it's coming from a place where it was like, I know I could take care of myself. Mm. When shit get real, I can, I can survive on some noodles. I can survive on some hot dogs, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But no cap. when you take care of a whole nother human being and be like, she getting the best of the best and I'm taking care of me. Mm. It just give you that drive that much, boy, you on your shit. This ain't no, Mama, daddy, money. This ain't no 
this person, this ain't no the label cut this chicken. This no, this daddy going out here doing this damn thing, running through these interviews, doing these shows, and I bring it back to the crib like, baby, you go get these shoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can go do this right here, and, and, and you can go to sleep at night and be like, I did that. I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. It, and then it's coming from a spirit where it's like. It wasn't forced, or I had to go take from somebody, or I had to go risk. You know what I'm saying? Risk what the fuck I got going on, jeopardize what I got going on just to make this stuff happen. So I just feel like that alone, just looking at my daughter, she probably not understand everything right now, but it's just the simple fact on her face, like, Pa's able to take care of you and me. It sounds like your daughter is able to like give you that reflection and have you like pat yourself on the back or celebrate your small wins. Uh, Most definitely. Often, because like, just being honest, I ask that question because sometimes we get so lost in the next, the next, what's happening next that we don't sit the time to sit down and be like, damn, bro, I just did a million views on this YouTube video. But I like video. that though. Like exactly what you just said. Like what's next? Like I live in a moment, literally five to 10 seconds, bro. Like mm -hmm. my a and and uh, the coaches that's around me, they be like, damn, nigga, be grateful for a second, but bro, I'm so used to shit can take a, t a curve in a minute. Like shit, you, you can feel like you just hit the lottery. Like we got a, a brother fresh out. You feel what I'm saying? Like man, we got a little money come through, and then out of the blue, you wake up the next morning. It's like man, fuck, it's all gone. This shit gone. But you that's why you should maybe live in a moment. You say you live in the moment for maybe five seconds. Maybe you should do 25 seconds next because. Just like you said, it can, that shit. it can be gone the next day. So it's imagine dumb. if we just imagine if we got a million dollars, right? And we trying to make it ten million dollars. That we we trying to make we trying to flip this million dollars so much that we don't even mm -hmm. understand the power of our million dollars. Now it's gone Most tomorrow. Definitely. We ain't even appreciate it when we had it yesterday. Most definitely, you get what I'm trying to say. Most so I definitely. feel like, and this is something that I'm working on. So I'm just really speaking to myself. But I'm but saying that real. Because that real. I get it. I understand. The, I drop a video, niggas fucking with it. You trying to no, capitalize gotta, at that moment. I gotta top this, I gotta top that. And it's, no, man, let me just, but I was really good. I asked some good questions, we had some great conversations. Most definitely, let me cherish most definitely, this most definitely. You know I, mean? I feel like we gotta start doing that as men. I feel like a lot of times we just, we trying to top the next, we trying to have the uh, the next big thing when we, we don't really appreciate the, the big thing we got now. I feel like that come off of uh, the pressure. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what pressure though? But what pressure do we really have? We create our own pressure. I feel like like a lot of people and they, that shit fuck with me a long damn time because <laughs> I'd be like, where does pressure coming from? Facts, like right? you would be like, then you would sit there, you be like, man, so and so did it then. You would have that person that I was like, from who? But you never say who. And then when you sit down <laughs> thinking about, it, be like. Man, fuck, who, where this pressure? I'm putting the pressure on myself. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like as men, especially when you coming from a household where I'm the one that can probably make a real difference. difference. Mm, facts. That's where the pressure come up to you like, man, I know what the dirty look like. I got a little something now. It probably ain't, we can't move everybody out the hood or I can't even move these three people out the hood. But I done tasted it enough where it's like, I can't go back to that. And I feel like that's where the pressure on the well. Mama do say, dang, I remember you had it a couple months. She probably ain't said it, but you could, you could tell out the body language. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I don't want to ask her for it right now because I know shit kind of rocky right now. You know your mama. You know your pa. You know, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So I feel like as men, we kind of create our own pressure we got to have the best of we got to make sure this is handled especially when and i ain't gonna say everybody every man or every you know what i'm saying every person but those that's big on taking care of their responsibilities now that's pressure i ain't gonna lie i'm thinking about it that's a lot of pressure like when you're not trying to go back like when i moved on up what they say you feel me when i moved up i'm like no nah, i ain't going back that's a lot of I pressure can't, bro. i'm not i like, can't I die before, like that's I how you die before I go back. I done <laughs> I made it out back. of it, bro. Like, <laughs> how can and then it then you being competitive with yourself, like, bro, I know I did this in this amount of time, bro. I know I can double that shit if mm. I do this. And, then you go to who I need to talk to. Then once you get into the present, you don't make that goal. It's like, who I need to who who the next person, you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like it's an ongoing thing, but I just feel like 
it's in certain men. You know what I'm saying? You just got to have that 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 hustle in you and that that mentality where it's like I'm trying to outdo myself every time. It's mm. like I'm not in competition with you. I'm not in competition with you, but I'm in competition with myself. Myself, nigga. When I look in the mirror, I'm like, man, all right, you was good, but I need to be better. You feel me, like, bro? You <laughs> looking like this a week ago? Like, man, I'm trying to look like when I come and look in that mirror, like, boy, you look like money. Mm. You look like money, like. I mean, you looking like money. You looking good, bro. I'm, I'm trying to. Got a big I'm chain. Got a roll. You looking good, dog. <laughs> I'm getting though. You know I'm saying? getting though. These niggas don't got the roll. Yeah, you, might, you, you gotta appreciate that. I'm getting for sure. I'm getting No cap. No, bro. I fuck with it, bro. Um, I, I I really wish one of the few people that um I really like rooting for, and I never even met you, like, and yeah. I mean that. Like I said, I just, it just take a couple interviews to look at. I'm like, damn, this nigga. That's real. I fuck with it, bro. Um, what, how, what do you, like, how can you get to the next level? How can we? How can I help you get to the next level? Really, for real. Man, right, just I just feel like honesty. Mm. Like, bro, it's so crazy because, air. I feel like everybody be like, man, I don't want no yes man around me. I don't want. We want yes man around us sometimes. We mm. want to hear it feel that. Good. It feel good. We want, we sometimes, we want to hear I like our that. thoughts told by somebody else. That's you know what great, I'm saying? If I'm saying in my mind, just the best thing that don't happen. I want to hear my partner. That, that confirmation. I, that, I, that confirmation. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like once I got through that part where it was like, Man, yo, yes is not always the right yes. Facts. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, it's not always the right yes. And when I got in that state of mind where I got around a group of people, it was like, but that ain't it. Mm -hmm. You need to start doing this. You need to, and at first it was like, man, what you mean? Like, I feel like I'm on the top of it. Like, I had that ego. You know what I'm saying? Where I, was on the, I felt like I was that person. But <clears throat> when I sat back and I thought about it, I'm like, well, you ain't did shit yet. And then when you look at their resume and the people that don't work with it, I'd be like, how can you go against them? It, it vouched for itself. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. And I, I think that was like the biggest thing that I had growing up, especially being the only child. I ain't had nobody tell me stuff. And I felt like I grew to a point where nobody couldn't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had to start listening. And when I, that, that was like hard big, though. Man, bro, oh my. Because you always think somebody, hey, you know, you think somebody like, man, you don't know what you're talking about. You know right. what I'm saying? You feel me? But the next person over, bro, they could be the, they could be the brokest person on earth, but they can guide you, be like, bro, don't do this. And, and I don't, don't do think, that. I don't think people talk about it enough, but that shit hurt too. <laughs> like, having to listen, like, one thing, like, I hate being wrong. But I, I, I appreciate it. I hate being wrong. I hate it, but I appreciate it. It's like, when I'm wrong, I appreciate the fact that somebody can show me and I can get better from it. Of Most course, definitely. I appreciate it. Most definitely. But I hate it. It's like, oh, fuck. Like, where, where I went wrong at? You <laughs> like, know what I'm saying? Fuck, where, where the mid, where the like, We all want to be, right? You feel me? But we don't talk about how bad that hurt because it's like, when a nigga tell you about yourself and you got to listen, it's like, Damn, you like, right. He, he, he's, and some people can't take that. They can't though. They can, and that's where the constructive criticism mm -hmm. comes from. Like when I start understanding the difference between criticism and constructive criticism, I was like, man, they ain't saying this wrong shit towards me to make me feel. But like, nah, nigga, like you need to take that shit on the chin, and this is what you need to do to power up. Mm -hmm. And once I got that through my head, I was like, bro, this whole time. It's only helping me. They just trying to help me. It's only helping You me. feel what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it's, it's sad to say, I don't burn a lot of bridges. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's in thinking I know everything. Mm. Like I say, like I say, coming from the circumstances I'm coming from, and I don't want to put it on type of that, cause, you know, give that as the excuse. But it is a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Because it it's like, shit, I watched my parents learn from others but we was still in this same you know what i'm saying in this same situation where it was like we ain't benefiting from shit mm. but we was listening to y'all like y'all had it together mm. you know what i'm saying and it played a role in the way that i did business and, and with the music shit and it, when i got to that point i was like man just listen what a motherfucker got to say it can't it can't hurt you you either gonna rock rid of the yang and when it got to that point where i think it took was somebody told me something and it happened the way that they told me. And I was like, man, start listening more. You might find some more gems. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or you might get some more free game. You know what I'm saying? And that's when the end up started being, it started paying attention. I'm like, man, the shit that they saying, 
that's the shit that's happening to me right now. And they telling you how to guide through it. But some of us, we have had that guard where it was like, we deaf to that shit. We hear you, but we don't hear you. We're gonna, I'm gonna do that shit my way. So let me ask you this then. That's a great point. But there's another side of that, right? How do you differentiate listening, but also going your own route sometimes? Because sometimes, you, like, you're not going to listen all the time. Most definitely. And sometimes somebody might have a great point, but it's like, bro, I got to take this route because that's what I truly believe in. How do you di- differentiate the two? You just hit it on the money. It's nobody that can come to me and say, if you do this, this going to happen. Mm-hmm. You got the goals. It, it's that feeling where it's just so soulfully where you can just be on spoke your soul and be like, bro, I need, I feel like God told me to tell you this and I, you do this and ooh, ooh, this going to happen. You got to have that mentality where I'm going to take what they told me and I'm going to apply it to what I know what's going to make it work. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? I feel like exactly what you just said earlier, you got to always bet on yourself. Mm. Even if it sounds crazy to the person that's next door to you or a woo woo like, man, what? Like, da 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 Right, it's, it's just a certain feeling that you can't explain to somebody. Everybody that I feel like got they, that certain feeling where it's like, man, I don't care what you say. I know this feeling right here and it's telling me to do this. Mm. But whatever that you just told me and I feel like that was genuine and that could work, I'm gonna apply it to what I got on top of what I'm about to do. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And make it make sense. I feel like the communication got to be broad enough where it's like, how can that make sense what I'm trying to do? You got to have your own vision coming to the table. Cause I feel like if you so open-minded or you just, well, Man, I'm finna, I do this, I woo the woo. I'm relying on you on everything. And you gonna do whatever that you feel that you gonna do. So when you come to me and I be like, man, that ain't nothing that I do, but I ain't bring nothing to the table initially. I think what it sounds like, right? You know how they say, first thing you thought, can mind, you know how they say a uh, hard head make a soft ass, right? <laughs> what it sounds like is, you know, people say, um, my pa- when you're my not open, when you're, when you're not open into listening, I think that comes from an ego and that comes from, uh, a mental thing is a mentality thing Most but when definitely. you're opening to listening it comes from your heart so what happens is if your heart is in the right place and somebody is telling you something i'm opening to listening to you Most so definitely. some things i might do but at the same time i'm opening to listening to you but my heart is always with me as well Most you get definitely. what i'm saying but when when it's not in the heart and it's from the head i ain't listening to nothing you nothing you go mute I and, 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 and like i said i just feel like it's one of those things where you can't pinpoint. It just got to be you as a person and yourself. Me talking to you, you talking to me. I can feel like, man, what is he telling me? Right? I can feel it in my heart. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can take what you just said and run with it. More so than what you just said. You be like, man, that just he just talking off the motherfucking head. And I can pick up on that. You know what I'm saying? I hear him. And that's where that, that mute come through. Like, I hear him. You know what I'm saying? But am I going to apply that to my crowd or apply that to what I'm about to do? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, exactly what you just said, you got to break that ego barrier. No cap. You got to you got to get past that point where I feel like a lot of artists and people just in general, and this is just every aspect. Like when somebody say something that you don't agree with, the prime in our culture, I'm gonna say in our culture, we take it as somebody, hey, or they don't know nothing, or they don't whoop the whoop. But sometimes it's be some truth in that shit. You know what I'm saying? And you got to take that. I feel like you got to take that into consideration where it's like, man, I feel what they saying, though. Not nah, for real. You know what I'm saying? They might have came out the wrong way, but I feel what they saying, though. And you got to take that into consideration and build off of it. No and that was like the biggest thing that was with me. I love the criticism because it showed me where I was fucking up at. It literally, like, when somebody Chris, like, and it's not just one person. Like, a lot of people, they get frustrated, fluctuated off of one person. No, when you got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 people telling you that, bro, there's some truth there's in some whatever truth in that it. they saying, right, bro. It's no cap. And a lot of people, they'll overlook that. They be like, man, they hate. Nah, bro. And 70 people ain't hating. There's same, only one common denominator thing. is you. One common denominator. <laughs> fact, you feel no me? Cap. So what you, uh, what, like, what you working on now? What's next? Like, what can we... The biggest thing right now, working on these singles, man. I'm trying to, I feel like my music live in the club. I feel like I'm no filter type of person. But at the same time, it's just more so, I just say the things that uh, you want to say, but you don't say. 
And that's what I'm just capitalizing off of. Like I said, I'm just in that rim right now, just building the singles and hopefully that it turn into a project. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the ultimate goal, it turn into a project. But right now I'm just trying to get the people familiar with me, show my personality. I'm a funny guy. I like to have fun. I like to, you know what I'm saying? I like, it's, it's more than the music. I'm a family man. I'm a, my daughter, you know what I'm saying? I like to give advice. I'm a, and my, and, and you know, in the Instagram world or however you want to put it, coach of Florida. Like, I feel like I'm a coach. And I'm not saying that in a cocky way where it's like, we got to follow that nigga rules or, or we trying to be like, nah, like, man, you got some shit that you want to talk about. And I feel like I can help you. I'm going to point you in the right direction. Like a coach would do. You feel what I'm saying? And I, and I take that under my wing heavily. Like, it's like, we can't progress if we don't pass down the information. Because I used to say that by OGs that was ahead of me. Like, I'd be like, bro, like, how? That's y'all fact. saying all this stuff, but like, bro, how are we supposed to get to the next level if we don't know what the mistakes was? We don't know what worked and what didn't. And I feel like I'm in that point of, in my career where it's like, I want to make fuckers, motherfuckers paid attention to me. Mm. Not even pay attention to me, but I want to give back. I want to contribute to what's being contributed to me. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, motherfucker come to me and say, bro, how do I get on? Prime example be, bro, drop music. Be consistent. We could draw, it could be trash music, but you consistent at trash music. You feel what I'm saying? Like, All you got to do is keep going. Something going to hit shit. It's going to hit. But I tell people, look at uh, Jocelyn. I mean, no disrespect, but <laughs> I mean... Jocelyn was consistent. Most definitely. Next thing you know, she got do it like it's my beat. I'm, I'm just saying, like, no matter. Most definitely. <laughs> I'm just saying, Most like, definitely. you be consistent, something gonna happen. I think uh, I was talking to Carly, uh, young thug, ex girlfriend, and he was like, man, the, her, his advice to her was like, just keep dropping music. Just something keep going. dropping. And, and we see it. We see it from the grace. Lil Wayne dropped millions of records. Young but thug dropped millions of records. I don't feel like we in that point of time, though. See, I feel like well, that point of time. We gave artists the time to develop. Mm. I feel like now we in that point of time, a motherfucker first record, we expect y'all to have it together. And I feel like where I'm at and other artists that's in that realm of growing or aspiring, whatever they're trying to do, whatever goals, I feel like our goals should be like, we got to show them how to have it together out the gate. Mm. Because that's what they're expecting now. Like I say, it's it's one thing to say, I feel like it's one thing to say when the old heads or people that's seasoned in the game and it be like, man, you got to do this, you got to do that in the forest, you got to do it. But it ain't the same thing with how y'all came in. Y'all ain't have the technology and the exposure that we have now coming in the game. It took time. We ain't know a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. We just knew the hit record. Mm. But y'all was seven and eight records in before you know, we'll hear that hit record and then go do the research. Facts. You know what I mean? Now we hear the first thing coming and everything out the way. If we rock with that first, we'll we'll follow the trend. But if that first thing don't don't resonate, like, oh he a dub. You know what I'm saying? We don't give it the time to develop now. And I feel like we in that realm now, artists that is getting on. Pay attention to the stuff that is working. Mm. And that's what's the biggest thing that resonated to me. Yeah, I paid attention to mistakes, what not to do. But no, you need to zero in on what's working. So let me ask you this, though, because that's a great point. But at the same time, do you get so lost in what's working that you lose your your genuineness? Like, do you, you lose that what you really care for? Because, like, if I make a club record, but I really real. don't want to make a club record, but it works. So I'm going to just keep but making it works. club working records. Don't don't you kind of lose yourself in that though? I feel like I feel like that's the conversation you got to have with yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I came in this thing wanting to be an artist. I came in this thing not being a particular artist. I'm wherever float. Like I love music in general. So whatever make the crowd move, I'm rocking with it. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? But if you were that artist, I came in this and I'm standing on this and I'm standing on these certain type of, you know what I'm saying, woo the woo, and I got to stay in this room. Okay, fine, hand it down to cool. You stand yourself as a limit. It's a limit to you. You mm. know what I'm saying? I won't do these certain things. I won't go against these certain things. Not, not saying that I will go against my own principles, but it's certain things where you got to say, man, I got to expand. Mm. This shit moving in a in a different way, in a different time than it was back then. You feel what I'm saying? As long as I'm not going against my morals, I'm fine. Mm. If okay. it's making the people laugh, 
If it's making the people cry, if it's making the people feel a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, I'm with it because I, I want to evolve with the people. I don't want to be stuck in a time, you know what I'm saying? Oh, bro, he was popping in 2013. Or we, what, we in 2022 now. We, he was popping in 2022. Nah, tight popping. Okay. And we in 2035. Facts. He, he just evolving with us. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't going against his morals where he got to, I got to say this stuff, but they know damn well, like, man, that ain't how tight came out. That ain't how he feel. You know what I'm saying? It just got to make sense for whatever that I'm doing. And I feel like as an artist, if you entitled to your brand, it got to make sense what you came out doing. Mm -hmm. Or that you, whatever that you, uh, if you saying, man, I'm trying to do this right here. This is what I'm trying to bring to the game. Never, de never derail from that. It's okay to evolve from it. Sometimes, and, and I don't got to the point, sometimes people don't see the vision right then. Like, you be like, man, he went super left. But the whole time, I'm like, man, I'm going left, but I'm coming back right at the same time. But that, that left that I made is going to help me out in the long run. Yeah. It's something for the, for the moment. I'm just making this left. For the moment. But at that time, adjustment. it's only that you can see. Right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I just feel like it, that, that prime statement that you just said, it just comes down to the person, you know what I'm saying? The, their morals, their principles, and how they see they scale in their career. No, I, I fuck with it. I fuck with it, man. I, um, I fuck with what you got going on, man. I fuck with the brand. Uh, you can let us know how we can follow you, how we can support everything that you got going on. Yo, yeah, yeah, y'all can follow me anywhere at The Real Tight, that's D-A-R-E-A-L-T-Y-T-E, -E. that's on all platforms, The Real Tight. Appreciate you again, man. Most Mr. down. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, fuck with him. Tight. That's all we Family. got. Family. It's a wrap.